G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so very good to see you. Today I want to talk about this little camera here, the ZFC or the ZFC. Now today we're going to do an epic try on haul. This is not all of the potential lenses that I could stick on this camera, but it is most of the potential lenses. So what's so exciting about the Z mount, of course, is because it's the largest and the shortest, it allows us to mount so many different lenses, not just the Nikon F and Nikon Z, but so many other types. And I'm gonna show you some of those today. But it is super accessible with cameras like the Z50 and the ZFC, and it's super flexible. And another thing I'm sure you'd be super excited to know is that this episode, the main camera is the ZFC, black edition with the 28 mil 2.8 at DX, so it is 42 mil. Of course, before we take this lens off, this is the kit lens. This is the 16 to 50, a great little lens in the silver look. And of course, 16 means it's a 24 to 75. Fantastic, variable aperture, of course. So let's start off with something a little bit weird and a little bit exotic. It's a medium format Mamiya lens. Now I got this lens in, I think something around 1994 or maybe 1992. It went with my Mamiya RB67 and someone made this bit here. This bit, which is the difference between the Z mount and the Mamiya RB67 mount. And that's quite, that's quite sizable. What is that? Maybe three inches, close to seven or eight centimeters, but it's fully workable. Let's turn it on and you just have to cock it, which is kind of a weird thing about these lenses. Here we go. You've got to turn this to cock it. And then you turn this bit here to focus it. And lo and behold, we can take a shot. And I think that's pretty funny and that's pretty cool. So there you have it, the RB67s, and of course it works fully manually. The next interesting lens that I would like to put on there, if I can find it, oh, here it is here. And this is an APS-C lens. So perfect for this camera and also perfect for this retro look. Check that out. That really is a throwback to another era. Is it the 60s or is it the 70s? But I think that that looks super cool. This is a 12 mil lens, so it's going to be an 18 millimeter equivalent. It's fully manual. It goes out to F2, which is great. It's a pretty fast lens. Let's take a little shot with this lens. Yep, even on APS-C, it is super wide. This is a manual lens, so I'm automatically getting my manual dialogue. And of course, I'm um, at 1600 ISO, which I don't wanna be. Let's drop that down to something a little bit more civilized, like say 400. And there we have it. Oh yeah, that looks good. Fabulous. Well, I, I think this lens, which is a third party lens, looks absolutely gorgeous on the ZFC. And this is the sort of thing, this would be a great walk around lens. It's a little bit Leica inspired. And this lens is made by our friends at Pergear. The risk that I have shooting in this location is that sometimes the light changes. This is my kitchen and I like to use natural light and it was looking blue, and I think it's, I think it's gonna get blue again soon, but please don't get uh, too concerned. I think the clouds will move on. Now the F to Z adapter, I think is a marvelous piece of work from Nikon. It allows you to mount every lens from like the last 50 years. Now, of course, the screw mount, the screw focus driven lenses do not autofocus, but everything since then does, which is a lot of lenses. And let's start with a crazy lens on the front here. This is the amazing, the gorgeous 70 to 200 2.8 FLED, the last great 70 to 200, I'm sure, for the F mount. Not that old, I think it's only four or five years old. I've had mine all that time. An amazing piece of glass, optically brilliant. And here it is on the ZFC, looking actually pretty cool. Now, 
Let's see, how does it perform? Now that's focusing very quickly between foreground and background, very fast. And you would have absolutely no problem working with this lens on the ZFC. And of course, it becomes a 105 to 300, which is a pretty cool lens at 2.8. Cool. All right, what is the next F lens we should give a little bit of a whirl? The next one we are going to look at is one that I think might actually look quite nice on the front of the ZFC, and that is the 50mm 1.4. This is the 1.4G from quite some time ago. Is it about 10 years ago? Something like that, but I, I like it. And how does it perform? Well, it was never the greatest performer anyway, so I'm sure it's gonna perform at least that well. There we go, no problems. Foreground. There we go. There is what the 50mm 1.4G looks like. I like it. Okay, let's go something else F. This one here, the original 14 to 24 2.8. A great lens. It's been a workhorse in my camera bag. Of course, only very recently replaced by the Z version, which is even more spectacular. But again, I think that's looking pretty nice on the front there of the ZFC. We're at a 30th. I prefer things flat. And at the moment, I can only show you JPEGs. But that's working perfectly. I'd be happy with that. And wow, it's just, it's so interesting because these lenses, the design of these lenses, as I've been working with the Zs now for a couple of years, uh, they start to feel, well, older. I couldn't quite say vintage, but somehow they all work together, don't they? These are working in concert. I think it does. I think that's great. All right, let's move to another F. Next, I'm gonna throw on the old 85mm 1.4. Not old, still current. There is no other 1.4. I think we're expecting an 85 1.2 for the Z pretty soon. This is, of course, the 85G. There it is. I think that looks really nice on the front of the Z. And let's turn that on. Great. Easy to hold, not too heavy, but of course you're always gonna support with your left hand. That way you can do things like focus. That's the thing about heavy lenses, you have to hold them two-handed anyway. All right, let's give it a whirl. Yeah, that's it. Performing totally as it should. There's me in the background over there and the reflection on that picture. I'll show you. So again, let's keep in mind when when looking at these pictures, we are at a crop. So the 85, it becomes 127 and a half, I think. So that's a pretty long lens. I think it looks really nice, really, really nice on the front of the ZFC. There it is. Love that color, by the way. Everything's right about that color. Let's put on something even more exotic, which is one of my tilt shift lenses. I don't think these lenses ever look particularly cool on any camera, but here it is, a tilt shift lens on the front of a ZFC. This is the 24mm 3.5 ED. It's the current version of the tilt shift. I think it'll be a while before we see a Z mount version of these. Mostly used for architectural, but I also use it for landscape. Let's have a little look here. We'll turn this guy on. And this is a fully manual lens anyhow, so the only thing that changes is it becomes a 36 mil lens, which is an interesting range. Let me know if you'd like a video about the tilt shift. This is my 80 to 400, 4.5 to 5.6 D screw focus driven lens. I still think it looks totally cool on the front of the ZFC. Of course, a lens like this becomes a, it's an 80 to 400, so it becomes a 120 to 600. That's mind boggling to me. And of course we manually have to manually focus ourselves, which I'm doing here out on the front. 
which is fine. Now I can't focus as close as, I wonder if I've got that limited does, and it is on full. Minimum focus must be something like two meters. And that's great. And this is at 120. If we go out to 400, which is 600, holy cow. Just to give you an idea, this is handheld at a 30th of a second, where it's 600 mil. Be interesting to see what it looks like and how well the stabilization works in this old lens, which I, somewhere between 10 and 20 years old is my guess. Let me know in the comments. Okay, I think that's the end of our F-mount journey. Okay, so now let's take a little bit of a look at some Z lenses. And firstly, I wanted to start with the lens that came with the Z50. And this is the 50 to 250 lens. Now this is a very minimalistic design, this lens. I think it looks pretty good. And of course, you're gonna get the same performance that you get with the Z50. There's your 50, all the way out to 250, and 250 is 375. That's another long lens, and this lens is stabilized. So it's actually a pretty good, it's a pretty good lens for this camera because it's giving you super long range and you can get it with the other kit lens. And then what have you got? You've got something like 24 to almost 400 mils in two tiny little light lenses. Let's have a quick look at how it's going to perform. There you go, it will focus that close and golly gosh, that's close. Now it's, it's dark in here as we've discussed, taking a photo of the screen. But yes, you can see what a package that is, but it gives you a lot of reach and there it is out at 50, which is 75. I think it looks pretty good. Next, another Z mount lens. This is the 24 to 200, which of course, if you decide you go from APS-C and you wanna go up to a full frame camera, well, this lens is going to work with you. It's gonna travel with you. It's gonna take that journey with you. And we can see here that the design approach for the 50 to 250 APS-C lens and the 24 to 200 full frame lens, 35 mil lens is almost exactly the same. And they're very, very similar sizes. This one gets you out to 375, but it's 75 to 375. This one is being a 24, 24, 12, it is a 36 to 300. Now that's a pretty useful all purpose, just take this lens, just get this lens. You can upgrade in the future to full frame if you want to, but it gives you almost everything you need in one really good package looks fabulous on the ZFC, there it is, looks great. Some might say it would look better with the black body. I did contemplate using the black one that's over there, but I thought, you know, let's, let's go with the one that's going to be harder to be pleasing, not the easy, obvious choice. I think it looks great, proportions are good, size is good. How does it feel, how does it work? That's the most important thing. And it feels great. That is fast focus. We're out at a full 300 here, and this is a stabilized lens, and it, that just, that's fabulous. You know, if I was buying this camera, this may well be the combo that I would go with if I thought I might ever move on to go full frame. Let's just, I wanna show you, I'm gonna do some video here now, how smooth it is. So this is me handheld, I'm doing some very slight movements, and, that is just fabulous. Handheld. We are handheld at 300 mil equivalent. Rock solid. Why don't we try the 70 to 200 2.8 Z lens? Also, also stabilized. Here it is. There we go. Looking amazing. Good stuff. Loving the way that's working. So nice. So nice. And I know it's gonna perform as it always performs. And the 70 of course is 105. Now we're at 200, which is 300. Got the VR, absolutely rock solid. That easy, we're in video, we can start shooting straight away. Wrong button, that button there. And that is handheld on the 70 to 200 2.8Z. VRS, I've got focus set to auto. As you can see, it's going between the front of the lens and you can see the screen there on the side is out of focus. 
and then it brings that into focus. Again, we'll go from the we'll go from the lens. You can see the screen is out of focus. Over to the screen. So there we go. That is pretty cool. Again, I mean, what a cracker, cracker of a lens to put on the ZFC. The 70 to 200 with, with, with the two times teleconverter. Oh my God. Then what does it become? It's just become something crazy. Here we go. Got to make sure you do that the right way or you damage everything. There's the two times teleconverter. So small, so amazing. Let's pop it on the ZFC. So on the long end, on the long end, we are now, we are now 600 mils. Let's see how this goes. I don't think it'll focus this, oh, no, no, focusing remains the same if I recall correctly. Of course we lose a little bit of, oh wow, that was quick. That was quick. Yeah, that is just, that is working amazingly well. We'll roll the video, we're rolling video because autofocus doesn't always know what you want to focus on. Look at that, there's me in a picture on the wall. And then this is going from five feet to, uh, I don't know, 40 feet or 30 feet. So, boom, boom. Two times teleconverter. Boom, 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 boom. That's, that's a big, like it's fully out of focus, that background, and it's got to go, well, I've got to jump through a massive amount of range. And we're, we're at 70 mil, which is the equivalent of 105. Let's go out to what is, no, no, not 105, because we're on the two times converted, which means we're at 210. This is 600 mil, and this will focus. That's insane. And I'm handheld, just remember that. And look how stabilized this all is, handheld. We'll go to the front of the lens. I'm gonna push it when I'm ready. One, two, three, focus. One, two, three, focus. And there, there I am in a, in a picture on the other side of the room, 600 mils. This is full 600 mils. And just to give you an idea, the ISO is auto ISOing out to 2000. So that is very impressive. And then that's dragging back to that closer. Yeah, I'm impressed. Very impressed. And I'm hitting the button three, two, one, hit. Three, two, one, hit. Very impressive. I am impressed by that package. It's just, it kind of says to me that it doesn't really matter which Z camera you have. They work really well. And of course, the ZFC is the newest body from Nikon. And we know that they've put better autofocus in there. We don't quite know how. What's happened? Is it a new processor or, or better algorithms? But I'm using this fully pro lens with a teleconverter. And really, that's some of the best that I've seen at work. So uh, I'm impressed. I think they're continuing to tweak the algorithms. It's great. Great stuff. have swung over again it was supposed to be a nice day today but it is the middle of winter here so we're back in dark mode well, we're changing between day mode and night mode kind of cool yeah right yeah anyway that is the crazy the crazy zfc with the two times teleconverter and the 70 to 200 now imagine imagine what that's going to be like with say the 100 to 400 or the 200 to 600 that's coming soon. I would expect the teleconverter to work with both of those lenses. And on that 600, with the teleconverter 1200, with the APS-C crop, that will take you out 
to a whopping 1800 mils. Let's test that out when it all turns up, hey? Eh? That'll be amazing. Anyway, let's move on from this crazy setup here. We'll just take that off very gently because everything is precious and lovely. Now, it's a brutal day out there. It's raining right now. Now, where were we up to? Oh, why don't we throw on the lens that came with some of the original releases of the Z6 and the Z7. This is the ubiquitous 24 to 70. Nice scaling there. Looks great. And lo and behold, that looks pretty nice. And that will be a 36 to 105 at f4. But the proportions on that and the colorings, they look good. That's good. Good result. I like it. All right. And there it is zoomed out. Oh, let's throw on another 24 to 70. This time, the 2.8. All of these lenses are so good, but these 2.8 Trinity of Primes, they're just a little bit nuts, all of them. There it is. I think, I think that looks nice. Proportions are good. Reminds me of many a camera of olden times. I like it. And again, 24, so 36. 36, there's 36. I want to go over the stills. So a DX, 36. Now we don't need to press the button in most positioning on this thing. 14 to 24 Z version. Gorgeous lens because it's so light, so compact, yet still packs optical stellar punch. And as I was saying, all of these, trin the trinity of 2.8 zooms are spectacular. There it is there looking absolutely gorgeous. And we'll go around to 14, which of course is going to be a 21. And that's plenty wide. I mean, you can, you can see how wide that is in those stills that I'm taking. Zoom into 24, which becomes 36. So 21 to 36. Pretty damn awesome. And of course, I don't own the 14 to 30 F4, but that would be another great option for this camera. Um, looks wise, I love the way that looks. I really like that. I think that works. Okay, and here we have the 50 mil 1.2. Perhaps one of my favorite lenses of all time. Now, of course, it's a 75 on here. And let's just have a little look at it. Very fast. Background, foreground, background, foreground. Oh, I love that. I just love that. Let's turn up that shutter speed a bit. One, two. And we'll go down to 1.2. Oh, we can go on. We can go higher, can't we? Let's get a two. For, yeah. Background, foreground, background, foreground. Stellar, looks great. Obviously it's a pretty large lens really on any of the Nikon bodies, but uh, there it is, works as expected. Let's just keep flying through. There's just so many lenses that I happen to own. And seeing them here on this near on entry level body, well, that's pretty cool. Now, here's another lens which might quite nicely go with the ZFC and it's the 105 macro. Very similar size to the 50mm 1.2, as we can see. Uh, but this has VR, which makes it, you know, gives it a little bit of an edge on some of these other lenses with no VR. And there we have it. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that is so smooth. That, that is just so smooth. There's the screen, background, screen, background. It's just like, this is a macro lens. Now, I don't know much about the previous Nikon macro lenses, but it's just working so fast. Let's, I'll show you in video. Here we go. Video, background, foreground, background. That's pretty amazing performance, I think, for a lens like this. 
And as I said, it's 167 and a half. So that is pretty close to a 200 mil. At 2.8, and you have the macro function. That is working really nicely, looks good. And Nikon have managed to make this lens so light that it doesn't feel at all difficult when using it this way. I love that. Great result. Now I'm not gonna show you all of my primes. There's the 35, there's the 50, there's the 85. What I'm gonna show you right here is the 20, there's the 20 mil. The 20 mil becomes a 30 mil. I think that looks great. It's very classic. That rem Look, this really actually reminds me of my K1000 from over 35 years ago. And it really is harking back to that, that beast. 20 becomes 30. With all of these full frame lenses, you're getting the very best out of these lenses because you're using the center of them. Even so, these lenses are all very good across the full frame. There's just no question at all that they will be great in the middle. So now, some exotics. Some crazy things for us here. And what do we have here? We have, here is the lower shift lens. And this is the widest shift lens I've ever had the pleasure of having in my life. Still wider than the 24 and it can do this magic trick which is where if we can see it here can we see this oh yeah there we go which allows you to make verticals straight. Now this is a fully manual lens as you'd expect as all tilt shift lenses are and that's great that's working perfectly. Again I don't think any tilt or tilt shift or shift lenses they're not none of them are pretty I don't know why you're going off taking all those photos. Anyway, let's keep going. We've still got a few more to go. And I've got to pick up my kid from school. <laughs> this has been shooting for so long. I was waiting on the light. I couldn't wait any longer. We do have this very interesting adapter here, which is the Megadap adapter, which allows you to make manual lenses auto-focused. It's a bit of a crazy idea. The lens, this final lens that I'm going to put on here is a Leica mount lens and it's a 50mm 0.95 opposite to what I'm used to. Okay, so there we have the 50mm 0.95 from Megadap. 0.95 as we can see here. This is a Leica mount version but with this adapter it allows us to use this Leica mount version and it also makes it an autofocus lens, which is just a little bit crazy. So let's, let's watch this happen. So we'll turn it on and we are wide open. So it's very wide open. Let's make it a bit darker. And where is my camera? I can't even see it. It's so out of focus. There it, there it is there. And there you can hear it struggling away, but it still worked. It still found focus. And you can see that. You can see it getting focused. Now let's go out to the wall behind and boom. It's very dark out there, so this is a really difficult test. Let's try this little plant here. There we go. You can see that, the green box, and then back to the camera, and it's doing it. So that is very impressive, and not only is it very impressive, but I think it actually looks really, really nice. Let's grab some video of that so I can show you again. We'll jump over to video. Come back, buddy, come back. Oh yeah. Okay, we have green. It's found it. Then we will go, sorry, my hand got in the way. And we found it. So again, this is a manual lens. A manual lens, 0.95, and we are at 0.95. Here we are with the amazing ZFC. And we have amazing lenses like this one here, the Speedmaster 0.95 fully manual lens, but becoming autofocus and working reasonably well depending on what you're doing, use case oriented. And it happens to look really cool in the process as well. So that really works. And we've had all these other lenses from Per Gear. We've got the Nikon F and Z mount lenses. On and on it goes. The Mamiya, the massive Mamiya lens right back at the start. So many opportunities. And one more company that's gonna be bringing us a few more lenses, I'm not sure when, is Viltrox. Our final lens for today is the Viltrox 85mm 1.8. Yes, it is. 
And here it is, the very first autofocus third party Z mount lens. And it's been out for over six months now, and I've made a video about it. You can see it up there. Where's the, there's the dot. Let's pop it on. Let's pop it on there. And that, that looks nice, good proportions, good sizing. So there's just so many opportunities. Now, uh, to the best of our understanding, uh, Viltrox are bringing us some APS-C, some more APS-C autofocus primes coming very, very soon. And I think now that the ZFC is out, they will move even quicker. But here is a full frame one. So this is an 85 and it becomes something a fair bit larger, doesn't it? Is that a 127? Something like that, 127 and a half. And well, let's have a look. I, I think that looks nice. I really like those proportions. Yeah, looks great. And let's take a shot. Here we are, foreground, background. I thought I'd do this just, I, I thought I'd make this video just to show how versatile and I was really interested in how cool and how good all of the different lenses would look. I actually think this one looks really good. But after using, putting them all on and using them all, yeah, the ZFC feels powerful. It feels up there with its brothers and sisters, the Z6 and the Z7 IIs. Golly gosh, there's almost nothing to complain about with this camera, unless you don't like a flippy screen, unless you really want to have a flash. But gosh, you get, it's good looking, and it's super useful, and you've got this plethora of glass, and this is not even all of my glass, and obviously there's way more lenses in the world. All right, everybody, um, this video is way longer than I thought it was gonna be, just because I kind of deep dived a little bit further, but I would love to hear your thoughts on all of this, or really, any other lenses. Is there any other lenses we could include in this crazy story. I mean, it's just amazing. Please do let me know in the comments below, is there anything else that you'd love to see and what you think about all of this and how you think it all actually looks. I would love to hear your thoughts. Well, as usual, absolutely fantastic to see you today. If this is your first time here, I would love to see you again. So please do subscribe, please share, and please make sure that uh, you like the video because that really helps us a lot. All right, fantastic to see you. I'll see you very soon. Bye. Whew. Whew. That's, a lot of, that's a lot of lenses, that's a lot.